Uh, my dear friends, now we are discussing, as you know, the Indo-European family of languages. We saw that English, the possession of English, we saw in the Anglo-Frisian group, Anglo-Frisian, West Germanic, the Lower Germanic, Anglo-Frisian, from there we have got the Old English. Clear, I suppose. Is any doubt regarding about this? No. Now the question is, we have to bring it to England. It is not in England. This is not spoken by people in England. Because already we have seen yesterday, uh, what did we see yesterday? That is the Celts, they were the original inhabitants of England. And then there were Roman invasions and they continued about four centuries. And in the year 410, the Romans withdrew from uh, withdrew from England, the English shores, because they had their problems at home. That's the reason. Now the Celts, you know, they were comparatively peaceful people. Uh, you can say they lived a quiet life. And they were under the protection of the Roman arms. When the Romans uh, departed from there, then there used to be pirates, you know, these pirates and tribes like Picts and Scots. Picts, that is the name of this type of uh, Picts and Scots. They are pirates as well as, they were also a tribe, you know, a kind of tribe they were. So even when the Romans occupied England, these tribes used to come and attack and plunder and uh, create some commercial tumult, so to say, and then go away. But the Romans, they protected the Celts. Now the Romans withdrew. And not only that, even when the Romans occupied England, the Saxons also came. Saxons, they also attacked England. But at that time, of course the war, so to say, you can see, the defense was the Romans. In 410, the Romans, AD, the Romans uh, left the shores of England. Then what happened, you know, that the Teutonic tribes, they are the founders of the English nation and the English land. Suppose you ask the question, who are the founders of English nation, what will you say? Will you say Celts? No. Romans? No. So Teutonic tribes. And this, there were three tribes, they were, I mean, there is a cover name given to them, that is Teutons, Teutons. Two tribes. That is the name. There are three tribes. That is uh, Jutes, Jutes, Angles, and Saxons. These were the tribes. Saxons, Jutes, Angles, and uh, Saxons. The whole they, they started their invasion. Began invading the island. Now the whole thing is shrouded in mystery or obscurity. All what we know is about the account given by the Venerable Bede, B -E -D, very important person in the Old English period, Bede, General, the Venerable Bede, a monk, who wrote the history, the ecclesi ecclesiastical history of the English people. Very important title here, ecclesiastical, ecclesiastical means church, ecclesia means church, ecclesiastical history of the English people. This is the title of the book. That is by Venerable Bede. Why is this called Venerable? Venerable. Well, he was a pious man, a nice person, a person who had got spiritual powers. So we, people used to venerate him. Reverend, is it? Reverend. See that? He's a reverend father, like that. Because we venerate them. So, so Venerable Bede. This is a monk and he wrote the history of the ecclesiastical, ecclesiastical, that means church history. But of course church means they have to bring in the people of the place also. Listen. So the Jews and the, and the sin. So actually what happened in 4, this is a very important date, 449. The invasions of the Teutons began in 449 and this continued for a whole century. A whole century, say up to 547. From 
So you can say from 449 to 547, 547, the invasions by Jews, Angles and Saxons. The Jews and the Angles came from the Danish Peninsula and the Saxons from Germany. Understand? So Dane, Denmark, the, so from the Danish Peninsula and the Jews and the Angles, Angles and Saxons came from there. Now Saxons, for, as, as I already told you, even in the in fourth century, that is uh, at the time when the Romans were occupying them, they used to come. They used to come and they fight with these people and carry away valuable things, and, and they would they wouldn't settle there. But what happened is that after this, the the attack by the Picts and the and the Scots continued, and what to do? When you are unable to protect yourself, what 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 will happen is you will take somebody else's help. So the leader of the Celts, his name was Ortigen. Ortigen, V O R T I G E R N. Ortigen. He uh, asked the Saxons, the so, warrior like people. So, so Jews and the Jews, so to say, they were the, they were the first people he requested. He said, please come here and help us because we are fed up with these attacks by uh, attacks by the frequent attacks by pigs and scots. So they came, but what, what happened is that they protected the Celts. At the same time, they forcefully settled in England. They forcefully settled in England, pushed the Celts to the hilly areas, to Scotland and Ireland, to the border areas. Understand that? And the mainland, they settled down. Then the waves of invasion, Angles came, and then Saxons also came. That is 476, uh, sorry, 410, uh, that is, I, I told you know, 449 to 547. That's almost a century. Waves after waves of this. Angles, Saxon, Jews came and they settled down in different places. That's all. And they what they had also they had a, they had their own civilization. They established, they destroyed the Roman civilization. All uh, this villas, this baths, and this uh, this roads and all that. They, they were not concerned about that because they were hundreds. They were hundreds and also they were they had a little bit of agriculture. They knew how to uh, cultivate the land. And then these people mainly, I, uh, they have got a, they were uh, the invading tribes. You know. They were invading tribes, so they came and settled down there. This was not like the pigs and the scots. The pigs and the scots would come and then hit and run. But the Saxons, Jews, and Angles, they were not like that, so they just settled down there. Understand? And then what happened is that you know they established. Seven kingdoms. That's very important. Now. They established seven kingdoms in England. That is, they said, uh, they, I'll tell you which are those kingdoms. Then it is called uh, the Anglo Saxon Heptarchy. Anglo Saxon Heptarchy. Hepta, seven. The Anglo, the Anglo Saxon. Heptarchy is called Heptarchy. They settled down. Now the poor Celts, they were practically pushed to the, the hilly areas. And the, the mainland was occupied by these people. They settled down there and they said they established their kingdoms, chieftains and kingdoms. And these kingdoms together they are called seven kingdoms, together they are called the Anglo-Saxon Heptarchy. And these are, as you can see, North Umbria, Mercia, you must have come across this in history, you know? North Umbria, Mercia, Kent, North Umbria, Mercia, and East Anglia, East Anglia, and uh, Essex, Sussex, and Wessex. So these are the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The seven kingdoms of the Anglo-Saxon. 
17. Of these, under the guidance of Egbert of Wessex, Egbert of Wessex, Egbert of Wessex, Wessex gained some dominance almost over all the English people, whether it is Mercians or Kendish or so on. And these people spoke not one unified language. Please don't misunderstand. They spoke a number of dialects. Their, their language appeared in the form of dialects. Dialects means spoken forms. That is different spoken forms. Although they are speaking something similar here and there, but they are all dialects. And Wessex, Egbert, and later on the, West, the king, King Alfred, you know, you, know, you might have come across these things in your British history. Part of British history also we have to cover, also literature we have to cover. Otherwise, the discussion on the history of the English language will remain incomplete. Therefore, you see, under King Alfred, Wessex became a very powerful, a very powerful kingdom. And the dialect used in Wessex almost attained, you can say, predominance. That is, became a significant dialect. Later, most probably, just from Wessex, the language spoken, or the dialect spoken in Wessex, again, is, it, because of its preeminence, preeminence of the kingdom and preeminence of the uh, king himself, King Alfred, it gained some popularity and uh, greater significance than the dialect of Wessex gained popularity and greater significance than all the other dialects in during this period. And this period, as you know, as I told you the other day, we begin the Old English period. The Old English period, which lasted uh, 452 to 1150. That is the Old English period. 450 to 1150. This is the Old English period. Now you see how that this is the beginnings of the Old English or the English language in England. Understand? So it's a very famous quotation. I will give, I will give that to you for your examination. And so it's very important because this is from again Albert C. Bow. I told you now it's better if you can get a copy of Albert C. Bow and read along with my lectures. It will be a great uh, advantage for you. So I, Albert C. Bow. He says, Albert. Albert C. Bow. You have got English by L. P. Smith. You have got English by F. T. Wood. Maybe you are familiar with the essay, a small book. F. T. Wood. But they don't uh, deal with the history and language and characteristics, characteristics of Old English, etc. in great detail. So you must have some. Some. If you are, if you wish to have knowledge of the history of the English language, see, see the details also. Then I, I would ask you to uh, refer this Albert Sibo. So according to Albert Sibo, he said, the English language of today, modern, the English language, this quotation is uh, useful for you when you are preparing for examinations, you know. For exam, answers you need quotations, you know, as you supporting, as a steady self and delight for ornaments. Says uh, Bacon. So this is ornament. See that? Instead of just writing and describing this thing and that thing, but if you support, you know, the English language today is the language. Is the language. It's very easy to uh, study and remember this, you know. The English language today is the language. So far it is clear, you know, which has resulted from the fusion of the dialects, which has, which has resulted from the fusion of the dialects, dialects means spoken variety of the language, the fusion of the dialects, uh, dialects uh, spoken by the Teutonic tribes, dialects spoken by, spoken by the Teutonic tribes, Teutonic or Anglo-Saxon, Teutonic tribes who came to England 
in the manner described who came to england came to england in the manner described i think that even if you forget even if you don't get time to describe all the history i told you it is simple what is it after all uh, the, the original inhab inhabitants were the kels when the romans came they stayed there about four four centuries four and they left and in between the saxons the picts and the scots used to come and attack this it's kind of hit and run is for plundering and looting then the fort and ad the romans went back because they had some problem there and then again the picts continued scots and picts they continued pirates they were so the celts were a peace loving people they did not they could not defend themselves before that they were defended by the roman arms so they went to uh, the ortigian the leader of the uh, celts he requested the help of the jutes they were warrior like people they came but what happened is they forcefully settled there forcefully that is important in battle come because you know they asked that you go away this is a good place so fertility of the land we like this we are we know how to farm the land we also you know, hunting and you know the uh, raising of animals and so on domestic animals so you go you are a useless people and they uh, push them to the uh, hilly areas etc they settled jutes and angles came from denmark and the saxons came from the the another another tribe also came but that is insignificant the frisians also came so you have got against a four tribes so uh, jutes angles came from denmark then from germany saxons came and then frisians also uh, and uh, they settled down so you remember the anglo frisian this from there you have got the that is the that is from there you got the english language old english and then they settled down there all these tribes they were warring people warriors and they settled down and they established seven kingdoms these kingdoms are known as anglo saxon heptarchy as you as we have seen kent we have seen over here uh, northumbria mercia kent then east anglia or then sex essex was six sussex and all this we have seen wessex gained supremacy under the guidance and leadership of egbert and later king alfred so a dialect of essex wessex became an important dialect because of that now all these things how do we know which is the source the source is from venerable bede the title of the book is ecclesiastical history of the english language ecclesiastical history means churches also ecclesia there is a greek word meaning church listen ecclesiastical powers also and then finally you conclude like this is it so difficult no, i don't know. unless you can remember the names of the tribes and so on so this continued from 4 and to 547 that is about a century not we should not say that something happened yesterday and then i mean two or three days these people were fighting and then they came no no not like that it's about 100 years so they are the founding fathers of england founding fathers of the language very 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 important for the knowledge and for also for ugc history is a sure question who are the founding fathers of england and the founding fathers of the english language and you said the anglo saxon jutes frisians not very i get the insignificant insignificant so finally you can conclude you will essay like this essay or short not if it is short not you have to cut short you can any of you should not uh, forget to write this quotation that is the english language is the english language of today is the one where is missing the english language of today the english language of today is the language which has resulted from the fusion of the dialects these people did not speak a standard language dialects so fusion of the dialects spoken by the teutonic tribes that is anglo saxons and jutes or jutes anglo saxons saxons who came to england in the manner described no man described so very very important quotation you must because this is the foundation of english foundation of england and foundation of everything that we see we read we study the literature english literature yes and therefore you can say 
This is a key sentence, a very important sentence. I hope that you will have written this down in your book and you can remember this because you know this kind of when you, when you read this, you'll have a flashback. That is, this we have we have summed up the history of England and the English people that is over a century from 410 AD to 547. So by the time our settlements were made, Anglo-Saxon heptarchy seven and Wessex comes, takes over the leadership. And let's see, here begins Old English. When you say Old English, 450 to 1150, we also call it English of King Alfred. Because there is always a representative. When you say, when you think about Middle English, you know, Chaucer, we say Chaucer's English. And modern English, early modern English, we will say Shakespeare's English. Because these are the representative people whom we remember. Because they have made contributions to this. That's the thing. Understand? I think it's clear. Now, in the European family, if you see where is the position of England. In the European, then you have got Western branch, you have got Germanic branch. From Germany, you have West Germany. West Germany, you have got uh, Lower Germanic. And from Lower Germanic, you have got uh, Anglo Frisian. And Anglo Frisian, you have got English. Understand? So now we have brought English to England. We have founded the language. We have founded the nation. Not we, <laughs> those people, they have done it in the 4th, 5th century AD. And uh, now we can start. But the question is, there's a puzzling question. What is the puzzling question? From where did we get English? From where did we get the name England? This puzzle will be solved tomorrow. So wait for a few uh, uh, hours. When you, when you meet tomorrow or in the next class, I will, we will, we will solve this puzzle. Till then, bye. Have a nice day. Enjoy your life. I hope that you will enjoy my classes. In that place, you should definitely, it's for your benefit, I am saying, should subscribe today itself. So because a series of lectures will be coming after this. This is only seven, eight to lecture. I will, there will be 60, 70 lectures, one after another, coming to you. All about English language, Old English, characteristics of Old English, Old English literature, Old English inflections. The, what is inflection answer? Old English grammar, Old English vocabulary. Because this is the area, uh, most probably students, they, I, I, when I was on the student also, I skipped this because it is very difficult, you know. Now, something, you know, you, when you say stan, 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 etc., because these are not used these days. So, the, what is accusative, dative, uh, nominative, dative, dominative, accusative, dative, and so on, the cases are there, no? see. So, what is case? Now, we don't have these cases these days now. We have only cases in personal pronouns. We say, I nominative, me, that is uh, uh, accusative to me, that is dative, isn't it? Such kind of things we say. But what are these things, etc., will be explained to you in detail, in great detail. Therefore, kindly, my dear students, please, as, as, as early as possible, but today itself, you subscribe to my channel. It's going to be very useful to you, not because I am taking the class, but I am going into details. See, ablog, umlog, and so on, so on. You, you know all these things, but you will together explain and understand. Therefore, bye for the time being.